time. It's time. And now, it's time for Herman and Sharon. Yes. I love you. Thank you for joining Hi, everybody. us. everybody. Join me right over here, honey, because okay. we have we an walk over amazing here. guest today. Mm -hmm. uh, reading his book yesterday just infuriated me. But anyway, uh -huh. I'll calm down. <laughs> By the way, that reminds me, Sharon, since we have an officer with us. Yes. Your friend. The Bible again? Your friend out in Arizona. Actually, she's my cousin. Okay. Helen Schrock called. Out in, out in Arizona. Hello, Helen. Because I was so upset. I, <laughs> my uncle, who is in uh, federal prison, uh, wanted a Bible. And so I got him autographed Bible and everything and did all of the th gymnastics that the prison system required me to do and got the box back rejected. Mm -hmm. And so I'm all upset because I said if it was a Koran, they, they would have probably hand carried it to the prisoner. <laughs> anyway, she explained that the reason they would not accept it, because it's not a hard cover actually, but it's, it, I guess they could make a knife out of this. Okay? Mm -hmm. that, it's, that it's hard enough that... Yeah. They probably wouldn't take it. And and so they rejected it. That, mm -hmm. That's what she feels. They didn't say anything on the box. You know, you'd think they would tell you. No, they don't have time okay. for that. No. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to I'm going to go the soft cover. So thank you, Helen, for Helen for telling us that. And, and we're going to go get a soft cover one and see what happens. Hopefully, it will. You know, either that or I'll write across the front of it, Koran, and then they'll go ahead. Oh, and get stop. <laughs> we have a special guest. This guy is absolutely a. Miracle. Yes. James Wisher Jr. is a crimes against children detective with a local county sheriff's office in southwest Florida. His story is one man's journey from a victim to victim to a victor, and that's for sure. At the age of four, his mother married a child predator, and that's what he's going to be talking about, what wow. happened because of that. The stories in this book, and yeah. you have a, ch a chance to go to the website and get a copy. Yeah, there's the book. It is absolutely, absolutely, let me say it again, absolutely <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Thank you good for morning. being here. Thank you. Good morning. What an honor. Nice to meet you. Hello, both. James. Yeah, hey, uh, Dave, I don't know if you can get a shot of this. This is pretty neat. Detective James Wisher. Uh, th this is the card, and, and he is a full-fledged, actual, believe it or not, right there, detective. <laughs> Look at that. And didn't of, think I'd ever meet one. Of all things, a detective taking the very people off the street that your stepfather did to you on a regular basis. Precisely. I can't. That is I mean, my it's, job. Th this is this is like amazing uh -huh. when I when I think of that. Yeah. That you know, it's kind of like a, a person that was. You know, never had the money for a, an attorney, and they become attorneys so they can help people. Yeah. Uh, you know that that had no money because they want to help individuals. But you're right. in the same kind of thing where, where you're going after individuals that are absolutely, they're monsters. Indeed, they are. Wow. Uh, front of the book by Grace. He survived ten years with a child predator. By providence, he now hunts them. <laughs> I mean, that—that that is just. That's the story right there. That—that that could be only God. <laughs> yes. Uh, some of the chapters. I mean, just—it's amazing how uh, this book develops. Uh, chapter one, uh, the happy years, and then it goes into the divorce, and then the happy years end. Mm. And. Uh, all of a sudden, you're introduced, and this is what your mom says, boys, say hello to your new father. And then the nightmare begins. That's How when many it begins. children were in your family? There were five at that time. A sixth one came later between mm -hmm. the two of them. But uh, we mingled, and there were five. OK. <laughs> you, have to, you, you have to read this book. <laughs> I, I, I can't cover a lot of it. You won't believe it. But you wrote it. 
I wrote it, every word of it. It was my it, life. It had to be hard. Yes, it was. Um, a few years ago, we decided that it was time to prosecute the bad guy that hurt us. Oh, and really? so we had to write affidavits, uh, some of my siblings and I. And while we were writing, we had not discussed these things for 30 years, probably. Wow. And um, as I was just pouring it out on paper, it felt right. I mean, it felt like, you know, I should have done this a long time ago. This yes. really happened. Yes. This needs to be told. Because after you, he had to be doing the same thing. Absolutely. They, they don't yeah. all of a sudden they, wake up one day and say, oh, my goodness, I'm a new guy. No. So he abused not just you, but the, all the children in the family? Um, to my knowledge, at least four out of the six, possibly five out of the six, but for sure four. Wow. Did it start right away? It did. Um, within, uh, oh, I'll say weeks. Now, I was very young, so forgive me the time exactly, but mm -hmm. um, within the first few weeks, he was... Age, um, age what? I was about four when we first got there, mm -hmm. uh, about to turn five, so in that neighborhood. But um, he was physically abusive towards us, as we had never seen in our life, immediately. And then um, just within okay. those... Now, physically abuse, what does that mean? I mean, like a slap? Or a punch. He was or mean. He was mean. It wasn't verbally that, mean. No, he was physically mean. Um, he, it was apparent immediately that he didn't like me and my younger brother who came with my mom. We had a younger sister who was still in Shriners Hospital. She had not come in yet, but we were the two being introduced to him, and he didn't like us. I mean, from the get-go, and it was apparent. But I mean, just mean things that you would never do to a child. If I was alone with him in a bathroom and he was brushing my hair back in those days they used a big brush and I don't know he would just look right into my eyes and turn the brush over and just caulk me on top of the head and I'm a child what are you gonna do when that happens you start crying and then he's uh, you know verbally mean after that uh, just a, a dreadful look right into your eyes dry up and we knew what that meant you're gonna get a beating and we didn't know what discipline was until we came to live with him and the mom was aware I can't be sure when she became aware. He was very stealthy. I mean, we don't call them predators for no reason. Yeah. They are stealthy, stealthy. They'll operate for years right inside a family. And almost every time I go to a family as an investigator now and say that I'm investigating a member of your family, allegations have come out. Almost 100% of the time, they say, absolutely not. There is no way. This is an upstanding citizen, member of, of the community. Um, there's just no way he well, goes to church and then when we start showing them evidence or admissions their knees buckle because they it, they never knew I was right in front of them but they never knew he began to strip and demanded I do the same raped and threatened if you tell I will kill your mom I will kill your mommy and you will never see her again those are his words so now was he good to your mother during this time when you he, he seemed to like her but he was also abusive to her i mean we also got a front row seat to some of the abuse that she had to take as and well she had to cover the bruises with makeup yeah so we saw that enough as well uh to at least know she was being victimized but um she didn't meet him in church i hope no <laughs> she worked for him oh. my, my father and her split when i was about four and right about the same time she was working for him and, it, it, you know, this, this is a little off track, sidebar here, but so many women go through a divorce mm -hmm. and they get hooked up. I mean, I'm reading a story about a, a uh, well-known uh, singer, mm -hmm. writer, and his mom hooked up with a respectable dentist. Mm -hmm. And he did the same thing to him and to the children. Right. Abuse, not not the sexual kind, but just beat after beat after beat. And I mean, if he got a B instead of, I mean, he was a top student. If he got a B instead of an A, mm -hmm. I mean, a horrendous beating. So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, how yeah. do these ladies, these moms, mm -hmm. hook Why up with these monsters? Why do they have to have a man? <laughs> yeah. well, well, I mean, they've got to have a man. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I got to have a man. Yeah, so for, for some reason, the chemistry between the two of them trumps everything else. I, I haven't been able to put my finger on why, but it happens more often than not. There are far more children being hurt in our country than most people know. I mean, uh, the Department of Justice will tell you that 
uh, about one out of four girls, one out of six boys, roughly 20% of our children are going to be sexually molested wow. in some, to some degree by the time they reach age 18. That's a whole lot of kids, that's a whole yeah. lot of victims, and that's a whole lot of perpetrators. He did something that you say in the book is normal, where he took you away from your grandparents. Mm -hmm. and, and Isolation. Yeah. And you loved your grandparents. Oh yeah, and they loved me. And they were like this, the safe island that you could go to. Absolutely. And well, I didn't ha really have to know a safe island in those days. Everything was safe in those beginning years. Everyone loved us and took care of us. And the grandmother, grandparents on my mother's side reared us while the grandparents on my father's side just doted on us and spoiled us. So it was a good life for the first life, four years. Yeah. Um, I just, when we went into the nightmare, I always hoped that Grandpa Grandma Wisher would show up and... And they did one time. And they did. Uh, surprisingly. Yeah, was, and and they even said, sitting there watching, because they, they knew you guys and yeah, loved they, you and you loved them and would run to them, and you know, like grand, grandparents are. Absolutely. And they said, these are not the kids that I knew. And so what did he... I well, mean, well, we had already become believers that we would be injured. I mean, I'll kill your mommy wasn't the only threat. There were horrible threats against us as well. And I'm an adult now. I know that he never would have done any of that stuff. He was a coward. But when you're four, you believe sure. those, the big people. And so we were convinced that we better keep our mouth shut. Mm -hmm. And so when we walked into the room, it was a great surprise to see them sitting there. It was a, it was a surprise visit. They just showed up. But we knew. And we just stood there like zombies and stared at them. And that's when they knew that what is, going, what is on. going on here? Yeah. This is not our boys. And then, you say it in the book again, he did what they do. He left town. Yeah. You, we, you went to Louisiana? Yeah, we got out of there, I mean, quick. It was, oh, was oh, it Mississippi? Mean, he, he took was you, it? the whole yeah. family yeah. away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he was, they were getting close to yeah. they finding were get, out. They were getting smart, yeah. yeah I said uh, it was a loose end to him. That, you know, we can't have people just popping in here. Mm -hmm. So it was off to... Uh, Louisiana and anytime he wanted sex he just oh yeah he had all kinds of children in the house uh, um, we have sexual predators and, and um, offenders categorized in about a half a dozen they usually fall into about a half a dozen categories and this guy was the worst of the worst he was what we call a sadistic child predator he had no preference male female age I mean, he was just a violent, violent man, and um, and you say there was uh, there was uh, pornography in the house. Oh yeah, all the time. Uh, sex was a punchline. It was never taught in any correct context to the children. Did you we were ever, just left to figure it out for ourselves. Did you ever look into his history? I mean, what made him the I, way he is? I knew all of his people. I knew his brothers and sisters and his parents. As a matter of fact, they became loving grandparents to us as well, and lots of aunts and uncles who loved us and extended family. Um, I never saw any evidence that anything happened to him or any of his other brothers and sisters showed anything like that. But, um, so I don't know if something happened to him or if he just decided, <coughs> I don't care what the consequences are. This is what I want, I'm gonna do it. And many times that's just it. It's just a choice. Now you were saved in a Baptist church. Yes, I was. And the sexual abuse continued? All for many years. Were you crying out to God to help you? For every one of those many years, I, I prayed daily for help. How and many years did this last? About a decade. Yeah. Wow. And was it daily or, or and, and I know you, you talk about in the book where you would do certain things hoping to change his mind about having sex with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you would try to create a, a buffer or whatever. And, yep. And then there came a time when you said, I've, I'm going to get either sex, which I hate, or a beating. Mm -hmm. I think I'll take the beating. Now, that was the last time. That was, well, that was the last time that uh, he physically attempted to rape me. I was about 10 years old, and I mm -hmm. said, that's it. If, uh, if it's that or a beating, I'll take the beating. Do you and still I, have scars? I've got physical scars on my body to this day. That they'll, they'll be here till until I leave the earth. Mm -hmm. What in the world kept you, because I know you, it says in the book that you uh, planned a rear ambush. I mean, so that went through your mind. I want to kill this guy. Many times. 
I thought about that. What kept you from that? Well, I was a child, so I don't know the real reason, but except to say that it was probably the Lord, just saying, I've got mm -hmm. something better for you in the future. We're not going to go down this dark road. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a season of your life. I will turn it into something good. You're going to beat him to death with number five steel rebar. Well, that was a, that was actually a bully at school. Okay. That was a different person. All right. I was going to shoot him. Okay. We we had guns in the house, and I had. Oh, is I, this the bully that you're going? Okay. Yeah. All right. That was a whole different yeah. story. That poor guy doesn't know how close he was. Yeah. Um, in other words, you'd had all you could that's all, that's from all, everybody. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't put Bullies up with at school on top yeah. of everything. Yeah, else. that was my refuge was school. Yeah. I mean, I had, that was eight hours of yeah. peace from that. Yeah. But no, I, at home I, I had a, an access to a, a shotgun that was mine, and many times I lay there looking at it. I can make this end, you know, in just mm -hmm. a minute. But you know what is amazing? Had you done that, would anybody have believed that this guy was doing that to you guys? I don't know. Uh, that was the 1970s. It was um, looked at a lot differently back then. Yeah. Handled a lot differently back then. Mm -hmm. There were. But the only thing I would have had in my favor is my siblings that were witnesses yeah. to all of this mess. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what would have happened to me. I'm sure it would have train wrecked my life, though. I, oh, I would absolutely. not be sitting here as a detective yeah. saving children now right now. Now, what brought it to an end? You said you would have been, what, about 14? About 14. So what caused it to stop? Uh, my mother left uh, in July of that year, the summer of that year, and we went back to Kentucky to get, to get away from him. I believe she may have seen something or walked in on something anyway we left while we were gone we reconnected with grandparents and relatives that we had been cut off from and it was during that time that my grandparents said that's enough you know no more running away because she had come before she had left before and and went back and surprised everybody oh. so this time they said we're going to call your father we know where he is he's in florida and we're going to know where you guys are all the time so we didn't tell anybody then, but we knew we had a good circle of people who were ready to believe us. And it was just a couple of months after that that my brother and I said, that's enough. Let's start telling people. And um, that's okay. when it all began to end. Now, where is he today? Well, it's a, a kind of su a surprise ending in the book, but uh, he's, uh, he's where he needs to be. We'll just put it that way. Did you go through trials? We were about to. We were. Um, we decided in 2007 that it was time to prosecute him. Almost all of the crimes that he committed against us were, in this state, capital offenses with no statute of limitations, and in many other states. So we were ready to, um, you know, prosecute all of those. And something happened before we could uh, we could prosecute him. Did he remarry during this? Yeah. Uh he didn't marry, um, but he lived with a, a lady for a long time. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're unable to talk about what took place? I can tell you. It would just ruin the surprise ending. He, um, it, yeah, really, okay. it, it, it really doesn't matter. He was, uh, he was the victim of a homicide about uh, uh, several years ago, about 2007, I believe, over on the other coast of Florida. Mm. Um, I don't know all the details. Was it of related it. to any of Oh, no, no. He was, uh, he was at a, uh, a poker game. He was an avid poker player for many, many years, always gambling. And he was just at a poker game that was high stakes. There was a lot of money involved. And uh, a couple of guys came in to rob it, and he got shot during all of that. But um, that was the end of the, the wow. trials for us. So to, to show how, I mean, the guy was smart and a great talker, mm -hmm. and he even started a charity. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> yeah, that's why I say that it's, you can't judge a person just by the, their appearance. I mean, this was a, a college-educated suit and tie small business owner. Great talker. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah. Great command of the English language. And um, he was even running for public office at one point when we were younger down in southern Mississippi. Started a charity, built a, a crippled children's therapy center down there, endeared himself to the community. Nobody would have looked at him and thought, this Isn't guy is amazing? tormenting children. Uh, in Can the you house. imagine attacking him? You know, can you imagine the community going, uh, nobody this would, is, yeah. these kids are lying. Yeah, nobody would have believed it. <laughs> so then what made you decide you wanted to be a detective? Was it to find other children like you or what? Yes. I, I was a police officer or a, a, a deputy sheriff, actually, before I was a detective and had lots of time to um, be involved with all kinds of crime, criminal activity and ferreted out and whatnot. But when the opportunity 
presented itself to me to come to this division, I knew that's a calling. I'm supposed to be there. I know how these guys talk. I know how they hide. I know what children are afraid of. I know what they're hiding behind. And I'm going to throw all of my energies into it's helping amazing. as many as I can. It's amazing. Your card says, Child Protection Investigation Division, Crimes Against Children Unit. That's the unit I work mm -hmm. for. And, and you know when you sit in front of these guys and you hear what they've done, yeah. what keeps you from going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, grace. Yeah. It's, it's just a calling. It's a gift. Um, there's a lot of things in law enforcement that I don't have the stomach for. Mm -hmm. For some reason, God has screwed me together such that I can sit across the table from these guys, talk with them for a long time, and just try to get the, the information that we need. Now, when they look you in the eye and they go, Detective, these things they're saying about me, I would never do those things. Don't you understand that? Now you're sitting there knowing. I like the look on his face. <laughs> knowing that the stepfather would have said the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Well, um, I let them say that. That's that's their story for now, and so I want them to tell me their story, and then I want to talk about that story. So that takes patience. It really takes patience and training to sit with these guys and listen to them. And uh, some of them want to tell you what happened. Some of them want to get it off their chest. Some of them don't think they did anything wrong. Um, I mean, there's just, you have to figure out which category you're, you're dealing have, with here. Have you ever had to give children back to a home that you knew? That is the worst part of my job. I would um, imagine. I'm the law enforcement end of it. We investigate, but then we have to hand the case oh. to the state attorney's office. And if we can't prove that it's happening, then even if we all think that it is happening, uh, right back to the house they go until you can prove it. You went to Bible school? I did, yeah. Yeah, for a couple of years. Hmm. And you met your wife? When, when did you meet her? I met her years after that. Um, I was a late, uh, a late bloomer as far as getting married. Did, be did, did this part of your life, because I know in the book you talk about you had such a horrible thinking mm -hmm. about women yeah, oh yeah. That, that basically they're just trash and they're there to be used by men. Yes. As, uh, uh, as I started saying earlier, it, sex was a punchline taught in our house. We, there was no proper context ever taught to children about what this is and as you're growing up and questions being answered. So we, we were just left to figure it out for ourselves. And as, as kids, we just thought it was a bad thing. It's a horrible thing. Well, as I got older, you start seeing couples. And I was not able to reconcile that. Yeah. Why is this woman voluntarily, you know. Sleeping with this yeah, guy. Yeah, with this guy. And don't you, are you an idiot? Don't you know this is going to be painful and terrible? And uh, so I just thought that you know, as a, a kid, I thought, well, I guess they're just stupid or something. Well, then as you get a little older, now you're starting to become a young man and, and your um, hormones and all of that are changing. And, and so, you know, you start to desire the opposite sex and then you don't care. I, I already know they're stupid. They're easy targets. I mean, if, if, if they don't care, I don't care. I, I just know what I want. So it was a mess for a while. Uh, thank God it didn't stay <laughs> that way. Um, but um, how did how did that, because that's inbred. Yeah. That's oh. like in that mm -hmm. track in your mind. Oh, that, yeah, that was solid. And it's a groove. Yeah. How, do you, how did you come out of that? Uh, well, it was probably 25 years ago when I, in earnest, began to go back to church. And you start hearing from all the brothers and sisters around the country and, and locally that teach that kind of thing. It starts to unwind it, and you start going, oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, they're beautiful creatures created by God, and they're my sisters, and, mm -hmm. and they're wonderful. And oh, so it, it gets healed, but it, it was a mess. How's your relationship with your wife? Oh, wonderful. I don't know how she puts up with me, <laughs> but uh, we have a wonderful we relationship. We all have that statement. <laughs> I have a, a wonderful 10 year old son, Andrew, who just. Uh, Do you look at that boy with, through the eyes that you had to put up with in your life growing up at that age and wonder how on earth? earth could a dad or a stepdad or any human Anybody, being yeah. do anything to that son I'm looking at? All the time. All the time. Um, and 
I know that I'm, I'm happy, I'm content that he's going to grow up and never have the same story that I had. Wow. He's going to have the opposite story. Mm -hmm. He knows that dad loves him and will never stop loving him, and he knows that. And yeah, that's great. What a miracle you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, you should be so filled with rage and hate and murderous I would, thinking. I would still be in a mess if I was. Yeah. I mean, the, and, and this is part of the message, is lots of guys are my age that were victims of this, and they are enraged, and they are mm -hmm. addicted to chemicals and shipwrecking their lives. Yeah. And the healing begins with standing, taking your stand next to Jesus mm -hmm. and saying, you're, you're my help. You're the one that will save me and walk me out of this. And he'll tell you, look at that bad guy and forgive him, and then you'll be free. And that's when the freedom begins. That's when the healing begins. Mm -hmm. That camera is yours. Tell somebody about Christ right now. If, especially if you've gone through anything remotely close to what I've gone through. Um, you can remain imprisoned to it as long as you want. The key is in your hand. It's forgiveness. And it's given to you by only one person. God sent His Son to save us all, but He loves you. He loves you right where you're at, and He loves you too much to leave you there. And you can go in any direction you want to find help, but you're looking. The proof is in the pudding. My life is well. I am healed. I am happy. And you can be too. You take your stand next to Jesus and watch what happens. Pray with them. Father dear, we thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you for, uh, first and foremost, for him saving us how we would be lost had you not sent your son to find us and rescue us all and uh, those who believe in him. And I pray specifically for those who are hurting right now, uh, as I was, and uh, that this little message that we had today will somehow get in their mind and turn their focus to you and that they'll find you and uh, begin that journey home to wellness, wholeness, and freedom that I found. I pray for them in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You made the statement, do they ever change? I mean, a predator, uh, is there hope? Is there? I mean, I'm not going to say there's no hope because with God all things are possible. Yeah. I don't see it a lot. Yeah. Usually a, a person's gone that far down that dark road. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Uh, I've, ne I've never seen them turn back, but anything's possible. There's the opportunity on the screen. Get your copy. You won't believe. We only covered the surface. Get your copy. God bless. Bye-bye. is Joanne Bunsen. For years I would read the Bible and I would always have questions. I would want to know why did they do that? And then when I got an answer I'd want to know, well, what does that mean to me? And, and how will it affect my life and my relationships? Well, I'm privileged every day to teach for a half hour on this network in a program called Digging In. And what I found is exactly what I'm going to be sharing with all of you who have those same kinds of questions. At age 34, Peter Herrick joined the Navy Reserve and was deployed to Iraq. When the mortar round hit, I was completely knocked out. When he returned home, Paralyzed Veterans of America was there to help. We advocate, we educate, and we process claims through the VA, and we follow that claim from the beginning to the end. Without Paralyzed Veterans of America, I really honestly believe I'd still be in the hospital. You can help our paralyzed veterans. To learn more, visit pva.org. In our nutrition tip, we talked about some stuff that was really cool. <laughs> oh, burning. Ooh. Burning. Because it's a heart, we can like run and like on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> or, or not. Oh, my thighs got too heavy when I hit the mat. <laughs> so get plenty of salmon. <laughs> oh, can we start again? My mic just fell down my pants. <laughs> Did you know that over a million Americans are dying annually of